Hey, Mike Leva here. I'm a product manager on the Epson Mavario team, and we're here at GDC. So let's talk a little about this new VR device. Sure. So uh, what we have here is the Epson Mavario BT200. This is our second generation of uh, our smart glasses platform. And what it does is both VR and AR. From an AR perspective, it is fully transparent. So you can superimpose images on top of the real world. And then when you look at it from a VR perspective, when we try to block things out, you get a more immersive view. And so a 23 degree field of view, not something that you're going to find with some of the very um, opaque VR headsets. But again, uh, the cool thing is that you can kind of merge both VR and AR with the device. What kind of video games are you seeing thus far being developed for this? I think the coolest video games we're seeing being built are really ones that take advantage of head tracking and things that are different than you would just find on a phone. So right now, we really are just scratching the surface. People have built mobile games, they've ported over experiences from Android, but really, the ones that are cool are when they're doing something different than you'd find on a regular mobile device. So picture with me if you were playing a classic game like Space Invaders, instead of being confined to your screen, you're looking up, you're looking all around you, and you're shooting the aliens down as they come and try to descend on the city, which would be fixed to where you are. So it's things that take advantage of movement, that take advantage of using, your head movement to kind of create a 360 degree landscape. What would people be using as a controller when it comes to those types of games? A couple different options. Um, the, the glasses do support things like gesture, but that's very nascent. That's just using a front facing camera. So for the most part, it is using the standalone or, or this tethered controller. This has a touchpad on it, so you can tap on it to do things like shoot or other people are trying to figure out new ways, maybe it's tilting the controller or other ways to kind of make it different than just tapping or a normal experience. How many different types of games in general do you guys have available right now for the device? It's really just starting in terms of number of games. I mean, I could probably count on a few hands the number of games that are actually in the apps market, uploaded and ready to go. This is still very much a dev kind of dev kit, dev platform. So we're, again, we're only really scratching the surface in what we're seeing built. I think Gen 3, you know, when something like that were to come out, again, this is Gen 2, that's when we begin to see more content and again, an experience that's hopefully even better than what we have now. What's the rollout plan? What's your goal in terms of getting one of these available for consumers? So these are commercially available. They're, they retail for $699. We do, again, promote them mainly towards the developer community because we want content to be built for them. Um, but if we, you know, as again, as we go down this road to look at new devices, that's when we'd want to have it more friendly to consumer, make it smaller, things like that. Uh, but again, it is commercially available now. Anyone could pick one up off Amazon, off the Epson eStore, and other places. Do you have like a, a uh, timetable of when it become affordable for the average consumer? We don't exactly have that type of timetable. We are looking at ways to, of course, continue to minimize size, to reduce costs. But right now, again, it's going to be at that $699 price point. What differentiates this from the recently announced uh, Microsoft HoloLens device? Sure. So I haven't had a chance to see HoloLens. I would love to. I think it's probably a very cool device. So I can't really speculate as to the differences other than what I've seen the press report. And so similar in some ways that they both uh, are transparent and support side-by-side -side 3D. Similar in that uh, right now they're both tethered, it sounds like. I believe HoloLens in the and the experience they had was tethered to a PC. This is tethered to kind of a, a small controller unit. Um, but that's probably where right now, that's the only comparisons I know for sure, that they both are transparent, stereoscopic, and are hoping to create this kind of augmented and virtual reality experiences. And when it comes to augmented reality, Google did try that with Glass, and then I know pretty recently they discontinued that. But what differentiates what you guys are doing from what they had tried in that space? Sure, so I think we initially wanted to look more at enterprise. And now a lot of developers have said, hey, we do like games on this because it does support side-by-side -side 3D. That's a key difference for some of the other products, like the one you mentioned. That one's monocular. This is binocular. So when you look through it, you can create a much larger screen. If you've tried on glass, for example, it's, it's deliberately a smaller screen that's outside of your field of view, intended for maybe notifications and some real-time information. Uh, again, this one is supposed to be deliberately in your field of view, you don't want to walk around wearing this unless maybe you were in a controlled environment playing a game, for example. But, you know, again, a very different experience. 